hey, it's Ed Vargas here, and I got myself some Xbox 360 wireless controllers, so I thought I'd show you how to set them up, and this is really simple uh, now. So, first, actually, you're going to need some hardware, a uh, wireless receiver, to connect your wireless controller. So, I use the ZetaGuard receiver, it's like $15 on Amazon, um, you can get the official Microsoft one as well, there's also a couple of uh, knockoffs that would probably work, and then you'll want your wireless controller, so in order to turn it on, you'll hold down the middle button, and then in order to connect it to the receiver, you'll press the button on the receiver, and it'll start blinking, and then there's a button on top of your controller, right here, just a little wireless button, so you press that, and then you wait until the receiver turns solid, and that's how you know it's connected. So let's see if it connects. Right, there it is, it's connected. But the home button on the receiver or the controller is still still blinking, so um, we're going to need to install the Xbox driver after we've configured it. So we'll hold down a button and then D pad up, down, left, right, start, select, and then A and B are going to be switched, so A is B and B is A, and same with X and Y, X is Y and Y is X, and then left bottom, right bottom, left top, right top. So you know that it skipped some things, so we'll fix that later. And then left analog up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. So you can go back up with the D-pad and reconfigure the things you missed, so right top, um, but it messed up, but we'll, we'll fix it in the next configuration, so don't worry about it. Um, so, once it goes through, then we're going to go over to the RetroPie menu. You'll see that I've already added some games for some systems. Um, RetroPie setup. And we'll go down to setup, press A to select, all the way down to the bottom. And then the Xbox, Xbox 360 gamepad driver. And I've only got one connected right now, so I'm going to set that default to one controller. And then we'll select the enable Xbox drive. And then, so you'll see the configurations are set in rc.local. And then uh, it will be started when we reboot. So also the uh, analog stick dead zone, the lower the number, the more sensitive your analog sticks are, the higher the number, the less sensitive. Um, and then the, these things are just for um, glitches, but you shouldn't need them for the most part. And then so we'll cancel, cancel, and then we're going to reboot. And then once it reboots, it's going to ask us to reconfigure our controller because the driver uh, sees the controller differently. And so it treats it as a different controller. So we'll give it a second to reboot. And then uh, once we configure this, I'm going to show you a couple more settings that might make it a little simpler for you to understand and use. Um, so, uh, one of them is going to be switching the A and B button in emulation station. So even though your configs are configured um, opposite for RetroArch um, to work like kind of like a SNES controller, um, you'll be able to still use the menu intuitively where A, a actually equals A. So, we'll reconfigure our controller and it shows the Xbox user space driver, so that's good. And you'll see right here um, that it worked because you've got the uh, player one light on. So we know that the Xbox drive installed correctly. So you pad up, down, left, right, start, select A, B, X, Y, left, bottom, right bottom, left top, right top, then left thumb, right thumb. You'll see it didn't skip like it did last time. It's analog up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. Then OK. All right, so first thing, I'm going to show you, um, yeah, I'm going to show you the button switch first. So if we go into the RetroPie menu again, and for this step, you're going to need, uh, um, you're going to need a keyboard to make this edit. So edit RetroPie, RetroArch configurations. And I've got my keyboard connected as well, so I'm going to use that. So you go down to the bottom, manually edit all configurations, and then the very first one, the autocomp.cfg, 
you can go down to the very bottom and change the ES swap AB to one and then press tab and then okay and cancel, cancel. And then you're gonna reconfigure your controller again. I know it gets annoying sometimes, but this is the last time we should have to do it. So press start and then run to configure input. Um, so hold down a button down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left, bottom, right, bottom, left, top, right, top, left, thumb, right, thumb, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, okay. So, now that that's configured, we're going to restart emulation station. So, you can just press start, go down to um, quit, restart emulation station, yes. And then once it's restarted, your A and B will be uh, what they actually are meant to be in the menu. So select is actually A. So it makes a lot more sense. So you'll see if I press A, it'll take me into this menu. And if I press B, it'll go back out. And then one more setting that you might want to do is set up your analog sticks to work in your games. So right now, if I just go into Sonic the Hedgehog, you'll see once I get it started. I try to use my analog stick, it doesn't work, but my D-pad does. So I'll show you how to get your analog stick and your D-pad stick working, um, if you want to use the analog instead. So select and start to, to exit now, and then we'll go into the RetroPie menu again, and then down to RetroPie, actually I'm going to do configure Skipped on me. Um, edit RetroPie, RetroArch configurations. And then you're going to change common RetroArch options. And then if you want to do it for all of them, you can do the all RetroArch config. Or if you only want to do it for one system, you can do it per system. So I'm just going to do it overall and go down until we get to the input player one analog D pad mode. And you can do this for player one, player two, player three, player four. Um, and you're going to switch it to number one. You'll see at the bottom it's got some text for the allow analog sticks and shows which ones mean what. So Z is just D or zero, um, it's D pad, um, one is the left analog stick, and two is the right analog stick. So we'll cancel, cancel, cancel. And then we're going to go back into Sonic. see that my d-pad works and my analog stick works so it's good and that should be basically everything you need um, you can check out the wiki it's got some more information on setting different uh, controller config configurations for the, the xbox controller um, to make it work like a keyboard and there's a few other things as well for more advanced configurations um, but this should hopefully get you up and started for for the most of the stuff you need for the xbox controller so hopefully that was useful to you.